Are you a professional pillow fighter or a nine to five low cost time travel agent? Or maybe real estate sales on Mars is your profession. It doesn't matter. Whatever it is you do, however complex or intricate, Monday.com can help you organize, orchestrate, and make it more efficient. Monday.com is the one centralized platform for everything work-related. And with Monday.com, work is just easier. Monday.com, for whatever you run. Go to Monday.com to learn more. Well, I don't see the point in waiting any longer. So let's bring her out. The star attraction, the one you came to see. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Miss Judy Gold. You know, I just want to say welcome to this week's edition of Kill Me Now. Um, we are now on Facebook Live, and I have no makeup on. In fact, I didn't bathe today mm. or yesterday. Uh, I bathed before my show um, the day before, and I've been on a plane. I mean, I've washed my hands and changed my underwear and stuff like that. But my hair is disgusting. <laughs> look at me. Look, Just look at me. I'm fucking gross. But I don't care because I'm all natural. All natural. So um, I'm really excited about today's show. Um, first of all, Hennessy's not here, so that's exciting. <laughs> uh, Hennessy is, I'm not kidding, is speaking at a man's conference. Hennessy's my co host. I don't know who Hennessy is. So Hennessy is my. Um, co-host who is uh transitioning um although i mean Come he's on. he's a guy i mean there's no two ways about it that you mustache know? just gives it away. oh and now he has a little mustache that i said oh. you have to shave because it's like a teeny little thing and it's That's like, like my you, 13 year old yeah and that. you but right. i want him to shave it so it grows back thicker and he's like no I can't. so anyway he's speaking at a man's conference okay so filling in for Hennessy, but what's the man's conference? I, I don't even know. He writes me things like I can't. I'm not available th this time or that day because I'm doing. And it's like shit. I've never fucking even heard of. And I pr I pride myself on actually not being ignorant. Okay, that. Um, so here we have my my good friend Karen Burgreen is going to be co-hosting. Karen also has no makeup on, uh, but you never At wear makeup. I know, Judy, you point that out just about every time you see me. <laughs> no, I was, just, I was just saying because I was. So, Karen, thank you for being here. Thank Karen you, Karen Burgreen, Judy. mother of two, wife of one, and mother of a dog. And thank our guest today, I fucking love this guy. I fucking love him. <laughs> I've known, how many years have I, 30-something years? It's been a while. Yeah. It's been a minute. And um, his name is William Stevenson. <laughs> Woo! Uh -huh. William is a legend, a New York City comic legend, comedy legend, um, who I, I, well, we're gonna start from the beginning, but thank you for being here, William Stevenson. Hey, nothing, nothing, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Listen, I just wanna begin, cause it is called Kill Me Now and I'm always in a bad mood. Um, <laughs> I fucking hate him so much, like I cannot, like I can't even look at him anymore on television. Orange fuckface. I can't. First of all, I want to say rest in peace to the victims of the massacre in Parkland, Florida. And I am so proud of these kids who are, you know. Aren't they amazing? They're amazing. And they're fearless. And these fucking NRA fuck, you know, fuck you. Fuck you. And he's a scumbag. He had to have notes. In, like, he had notes in his hand. That was amazing, yeah. He's such, he's not even a human being. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Someone had to write, I hear you. Right. That's how fucking out of touch because he is. Because he doesn't hear anyone. And that, all right. I'm not, I'm trying to be open, but you know, did you watch that thing in the White House where they all, the talk? Which I've I seen was, a lot of stuff going on. All right, there. so they were know. in the, t you know, that he was having this talk in the White House where he had his fucking notes. Every other person, or every, you know, thank you, Mr. President. I support the way, the, uh, the direction the country's going. Like, <laughs> half the people who are going to challenge you, he can't fucking, I, right. I, I, 
his kids. I hate him. I hate fucking hate him. I hate fucking Pence. I hate Betsy fucking DeVos. I hate Sarah fucking B. Sam. I fucking hate them. Okay. I can't. I can't. I don't. I, I had to c- stop talking about her. What? I would get so, I would just get, just like you guys. Right. If I started talking about him during the show, it would end up like that. And I right. would just say something quick and get out and just let you know that I'm not with him. Right. But I'm. It's. It makes. I've been it's crying. It's, I know. It's and I cry. It's an I just sit hatred. there and watch these kids, I and I cry, and I can't fucking believe this is what I can't. You. I can't believe this is what we're giving our kids. And this wait, piece of shit. Right. This idiot who's dumb with his dumb. He's Everyone dumb. around him is dumb. <laughs> They're dumb and greedy. Right. And the few smart ones are really greedy. But it's like, if you're smart and you're with him, you're a f- bigger fucking asshole. Yes, I agree. Because I think he's like not quite a person. No. But I think that these people who are smart, who are sort of angling for something. Right, right. They Because re- they all know that he's a fool. Right. But also, the lock her up today. Today's Friday. This will air on Tuesday. But... He's at the CPAP, you know. Which sounds like something at the gynecologist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's true. But it He's does. At the CPAP I feel like convention, it's like giving me post-traumatic And they're yelling, under. lock her up. Meanwhile, everyone in his fucking cabinet is getting locked up. Shut the fuck up. Right. Shut up about Hillary. Right. There'll be Shut the I fuck bet you up they'll be already. A, I bet you there'll be a new indictment by the time this yeah. thing goes up. Yeah, you stupid fucking liar laundering money, you cunt. They're getting anyway, Canada awards. <laughs> sorry. I said cunt. Sorry, guys. No, you never. Um, sorry. Before I continue, uh, I begin my in depth conversation with William. I was at Indiana last week. Now, I have a joke. I really want to get your opinion on this. I have a joke about they, them, about um, gender fluids who use they, them. And the joke is about how it's plural. It's a joke. It's a grammar joke. It's a grammar joke. Okay. I, I, this is the second. So um, about a month or two ago in Brooklyn, I did that. And um, I got a tweet from someone saying, uh, after you did that joke, I felt very unsafe in the room. I identify as they, them, and I felt unsafe in the room. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? It's a fucking joke. You felt unsafe? You felt unsafe. Welcome to fucking being a human being, okay? And it really pissed me off because I'm thinking, what are you talking about? I've been fighting for your rights. I do a joke about grammar, like how ridiculous. Then, so I'm in Indiana last week. And then my son's girlfriend, Sage, says, has a friend, they, them. And she, they text me this morning. They, re, you know, left my show crying because of my they them joke. What what the fuck is going on? Like I, I just, how, I'm getting no reaction from you well, too. No, but you know what? You know but what I think. I don't it is? know what the joke is. I think no, it's a I stupid know the joke. joke. It's about how I, you know, it's too they many wanna, things. It's, you, you, they want to use the pronoun they. I can't. They is plural. They went to the beach. There's more than one person at the right, beach. Right, it's The correct specific. grammar, it would be it, and you can't call a person it. Right. Or you could actually say, you know, you could use it and modify it. If they wake up as he, well, they're hit. So they wake up, words, you're though. cutting me off! As they wake up as he, they're hit. <laughs> they wake up as she, they're shit. That, all right, that was it. It's a stupid joke. And it's, you know, it's right. like ridiculous. Um, Can I... St- yeah, but you know, I'm in the middle of a fucking punchline and you just fucking cut me off. That's Karen Burgreen. Okay. Okay. You. So go ahead. Okay, yeah. here's my point. Yeah. On the one hand, we have people who are like marching in the streets with swastikas. Right. Like, and everybody's like, give them a right to speak, right. blah, blah, blah. And then we have on the other side, people who are offended at a, a person who has fought for your rights right. my entire adult life making a fucking joke about they, them. Now, you can't be, this is my theory, you can't, if you're going to make a joke about something and somebody's offended by it, so be it. You know right. what I mean? Like, you know, you either make the decision like it's okay. Right, which like, I I'm, usually do, but yeah. it's like, it's like, what is this safe space? Like, 
Try being a 20-year-old black guy with a taillight out on the highway at 3 in the morning. That's, un, that's you know. Right. Unsafe is, is yeah, a ridiculous Yeah, you didn't term. feel safe? Okay. You know how many times I've heard guys say stupid fucking jokes about AIDS and lesbians and Jews and. Right. Yeah, whatever. So here we are. <laughs> Speaking of AIDS and lesbians and Jews, William Stevenson is here today. <laughs> Triple threat. <laughs> William Stevenson. Oh, God. I've known William since I, I think I began doing stand-up. Because William, um, if you don't know William, please look him up. Because he is, I, I'd say he's the quintessential MC. I mean, you're a comic, but you're the quintessential MC in New York City. I mean, you really are. You're the master of ceremonies. And when I say master, I mean master. <laughs> um, but your life is so fucking interesting because you're not <clears throat> you're not an asshole comic who is is in this to be, you know, famous. And you do it because it's this fun. is what you're meant to do. Right. This is your all right. So you grew up in Michigan, is that correct? I grew up in a combination of DC Michigan and DC. And, and DC, yeah. And, Most of Michigan. And your parents got divorced when you were uh, how Ten. old? 10. And that was bad. Mhm. Mm but you have a sister, right? I have 3. You have 3 sisters? Two older and one younger. Oh, so you're like mental case, middle child. <laughs> yeah. Um and it, was it like just a normal, happy childhood, and then boom? Yeah, it turned. It turned just like that. It was normal. It was happy, and then one day, my my father said to my mother, "You're gonna have to leave." And You're my, gonna have to leave. Yeah, told my mother that. Yeah, and she said, "Well, if I'm leaving, I'm taking my kids with me." Right. And me and two of my sisters were still in the house, so she took us to live with her mother. Right. In D.C. in '68. Now. You don't have to raise your hand, Karen. I do because you're very angry with me whenever I talk. Okay, so I want to have a record. <laughs> I Karen, want a record. yes, Karen. Yeah. Because I, I did. Your mom have an idea that this was going to happen? Like, or was it like out of the blue? Like, I'm going out for a pack of cigarettes, but a little. No, bit no, she, I'm she sure didn't she smoke. Knew. Oh, no, she, she didn't. She did smoke. I think. Oh, all right. It was just she drank. Asshole. She smoked. She did it all. Right. But. Um, I'm sure she knew. We didn't know. Right. But why did he say it? And she didn't say, no, you get the fuck out. Yeah. Because he's a man, and right. this is the 60s. And right, the, right. The man would say, hey, you know, I want to I wanna screw other women, and right. I know you're not going to let me do it, so you're going to have to leave. So did you? were you mad at your father? I was very mad at him. I was mad at his new girlfriend. I gave her, I gave her a pretty bad time. Took a while to to just be nice to her. I was right. just shitty to her all well, the time. Of course, yeah. yeah. Taking my mother's spot. Who the hell you, do you think you are? In your home. In the house, yeah. Did he end up having kids with her? No. He's a no. fucking asshole. <laughs> okay, and she's a bitch. <laughs> was she younger? Was she younger? Much younger. She was a student of his. Oh, what? I don't yeah. like that. He so was a, he, yeah. he taught. Uh, he taught. Um, uh, How's sex? That? He he taught Black History, right? To junior uh, junior college right. kids, and she was a student of his. And he's Marvin. she she said, "Hey, let's make history." She was let's from the South. She's history. very yeah. She's yeah. very very sexy, very uh, seductive. Seductive, yeah. Right. She so he him. just you're right. And then uh, what did your mother do? She packed her shit up. No, I mean as a job. Oh, she was the secretary. <laughs> So she, pe so do you just like come home one day and like they're like let's go like in the Holocaust? It was it was <laughs> it was that close. By the way, this is the Jew bell. Anything remotely Jewish, gets I get a it. Ring. I okay. was going to ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've so, heard that before. Though. Yeah, it was so it was basically let's go. And you're in what fifth grade? Uh, I was a senior in in elementary school. So that's fifth grade. I finished sixth, yeah. sixth grade. I finished in Detroit. Right. And then uh, my father died in 74. From being, from heart from attack? Heart, several drums of heart, I don't know. Oh, exactly. that's good, because yeah. as as we, you will soon find out, 
William doesn't go to the doctor. Go ahead. I just went. You did? I did. And? Are you okay? I'm, I'm alive, obviously. Um, <laughs> they gave me some pills and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm not on my deathbed. Right. It's better than I thought it was. Really? Yeah. But you're close. No, I, I need right, I need medication. All right, good. Can you eat like a stick of butter? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I can. <laughs> all right. So, all right. So then you um, you're in the band. Like we have a lot in common. I was I played clarinet in the marching band. I played the clarinet. I wanted to be the drum major. I was the drum. I major. know you fuck, but uh, I don't know if I've told the story. Um, I I auditioned for drum major. And, uh, you know, you, you, you had to conduct. That was the audition. You had to conduct. And I lifted up the baton. Um, we had to conduct the Star Spangled Banner, I think. I, I don't remember. So, I, you know, you lift up the baton, which indicates bring your instruments to your mouth. And then there's this sort of um, breath downbeat. When it hits the downbeat is when they begin to play. So in between the... Um, uh, putting your your instruments to your mouth, I lift up my arms to go. As my hands are going down, someone yells "Susquatch." <laughs> Did that kind of throw you off a little bit? And I was just like, you know what? I'm humiliated every fucking day. I walk into the school and get called Bigfoot and Susquatch. I can't even fucking audition for the nerdiest job in the school without getting humiliated in front wow. of the superintendent of schools, you know? Wow. So that was it, I know exactly who did it, and I hate him. So, uh, but I've really gotten over it. No, I have, I should look him up on. That is a totally. I usually do, feel good. but I, I did look up um, one of my teachers from grammar school or high school, uh, because in seventh grade, the um, coach of the women's basketball team said I was too tall for the team and it wouldn't be fair to the other players. Wow. So I didn't make the team. And recently I had a conversation with one of the other coaches and I, there was a picture of him and all these coaches from where I grew up. And I said, oh, Wayne Carrick said I was too tall for the team. And and the coach said, yeah, he feels really bad about it. <laughs> Fuck him. Right. Yeah, he feel, I'm sure he feels fucking bad. Anyway. <laughs> he should get a gun. Yeah. He should get. Yeah, right. So um, so you were in the band. I love being in the band. Yeah. Yes. And were you a good clarinet player? No. I, I was third clarinet <laughs> all the way I through. was first clarinet, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I played Sasquatch. well enough to, to remain in the band right. all four years. And then how did you, but you love to march, apparently. Yeah, I was the shortest uh, drum major that they had. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was over six feet tall, and I still fucking didn't get it. Go ahead. <laughs> so annoying. All right, yeah, Ray go Parker ahead. Jr. was... Um, Two drum majors before me. Ray Parker Jr.? Yeah, the guy from, uh, uh, you know. Sing Ghostbusters theme. Exactly. Oh, He's right. He's R&B singer. Yeah. You yeah. didn't know that. You looked it up on your phone. No, I absolutely did not. Oh. <laughs> How dare you? Wow, he was the drum major too before you? Right. So what was it like a heavy duty band? Did you go to any oh, like, yeah. did you go to like the Macy's Parade or anything like we that? The Macy's Parade. No we, way. We did a, a show, a halftime at the Lions game. No way. It was too cold though. All yeah, that's horrible. Fingers were, yeah. it, was, it was horrible. We sounded terrible. Right. Because all the instruments were out of tune. Right. Because, because of, of the, the cold. cold. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, that was the four best years of my life so far. Real? Still? Yeah. I know. I That's know. not good, William. I'm That's... going to see them, supposedly, if the doctor says I can travel. I'm going Oh, God, I can't. This is the most depressing. <coughs> oh, God, now he's coughing. Can we get the EMT in here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. I'm going you on the ninth. Shot? I'm having a party on the 10th. What? No. Uh, You're going on the 9th where? To Detroit. To, to see... Place to, I'm having a party at a place called Burt's Entertainment. For what are you celebrating? I'm celebrating being 61. Oh, right, because you did have your 60th that I couldn't mm -hmm. go to last Do you, year. Don't you and I have the same birthday? I feel like we have the same birthday. Are you no. March 13th? No, nope. March oh, okay. 11th. Oh, okay. Whatever, same thing. It's always like around the same time yeah. on Facebook. So. Yeah. Um, okay. They don't have it on, they don't put them on, on Facebook anymore. Oh, they don't? I, I, I used to have five or six a day. Right. Yeah. Now, hey, it's so-and-so's birthday today. Yeah. I'm so fucking sick of Facebook. That's the other thing I fucking... Fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. All right. I feel like they. I see the same posts. The same yeah, that's posts that whole new... Hi, there's an algorithm. Yeah. I can't. 
All right. So, did you do well in high school? No. Uh, my father taught there, which got me. So, you had to see your divorced father who t- kicked your mother out, kicked you guys out of the house. You had to see him every day. Yes. Until he died. Suddenly. Quickly. It was like, it wasn't even a hospital thing. He just, one day he was at Sears. And, Sears. And they, oh, here's a, here's a story. My sister, my older sister, met her husband as they would carry him out on a stretcher. In Sears? In Sears. And as he passed him, he got a message from my father saying it's all right to marry his daughter. No and way. he married her. Yeah. Okay. Wait, he had, he had, an, he had not, never met his He had never met her. And they ended up getting married. And are they still married? And they are still no married. No way. Yes. Wait. So your father has a heart attack at Sears. Which right. department? I don't know. <laughs> I know he was buying. He was buying uh, bedding for the. Uh, oh, for bedding the, for, for his her, spare for her cunt for the other one's cunt. Okay. <laughs> Did you had you Wait. made up with him though? Had you like resolved stuff? Um, ninety ninety percent maybe. Right. It wasn't completely resolved, but. Um, there was still a, I forgot what we were arguing about at the time, but it wasn't a clean uh, slate. It was still some issues that we had that were unresolved. So you were 16? 16, 17, yeah. Wow, that's a bad, f- t- uh, so everything was young. good until everything you're 10. Everything was fine, everything was wonderful. Then, it was, then you were in high school, you were having a really good time, and then your father goes to Sears to buy bedding for the cunt, and <laughs> is the cunt still alive? No, no. Is she around? It was, my mother was coming <laughs> back. <her> right. <laughs> she was coming to Detroit, and she was bringing people, or whatever. That was the reason he was at uh, at Sears buying uh, stuff at the beds, extra okay. beds and stuff. That's great. All right. So he has a heart attack, drops dead. <laughs> where were you when you found out your father had a heart attack and dropped? Dead? Oh my God! Where was I? I guess I was home because. Uh, my sister, my one of my sisters was like, the hospital called. We got to go to the hospital. Right. And the doctor took us into a small room, and I remember he had a, a, a little white coat and a and a, a clipboard and right. said, "Oh, Mrs. Stevenson. Oh yeah. Mm. Says here's dead. Oh my no God. Way. <laughs> yeah, he died. He's he's gone. So they opened up the uh, the the drawer he was in. Oh, God. And I got to touch him on his chest. Right. I'm like, wow, that's a dead dude right there. Oh, my God. That's horrible. That's yeah. so horrible. Yeah. Let's look up the doctor. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I'm, I need to know. <laughs> the fuck is that? I need to know what happened. And yeah. what happened with the he girlfriend? He went to Trump University, I'll tell you that. I don't know what happened doctor. to the girlfriend, but she had a sister that I kind of liked. Right. She also had a son that I didn't like uh, who was close to my age, I guess. Oh, so she had been married before the yeah. student. Okay, she was. Yeah, she had a. a oh, she wasn't old. like uh, an. I, you know, oh, like right. I, I thought, thought she was, was like 18. eighteen years old. Yeah. All right, so no, she wasn't. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go, daddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is she alive still? I don't know. I don't know what happened to nobody. All right. This episode is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Fiscally responsible. Financial geniuses monetary magicians. These are things people say about drivers who switch their car insurance to Progressive and save hundreds. Visit Progressive.com to see if you could save. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states or situations. So you graduate high school and you don't go to college. I do not. I went to community college. Right. That's college. Which one? Uh, All right. Wayne County. Uh, but no. did your did your sisters go to college? No, nobody went to college. I don't know. No. Your father went to college. My father went to U of M. Right, um, that's where I was born. At University the of, M of Michigan. Hospital. Yeah, right. and my sisters. No, I don't think they went. So, what happens? You go to community college, right? And I'm like, this is nothing but high school at night. So right. let me get out of here. And uh, the my teacher, my English teacher, who I I really like, and she thought that I was very talented. What was her name? Her name was Mrs. Mead, Bonnie oh. Mead. Bonnie Mead? Bonnie Mead. Mead like the notebooks. She's perfectly named. <laughs> no, like Mead 
school supplies. I understand, Karen. Okay. Go ahead. My big thing was, uh, I think I wrote um, my claim to fame or whatever made me famous or whatever she thought made me stand out was, I think I wrote a a paper on what happens to shit when you when it goes down the toilet. Right. Oh, that's that's. <laughs> is that true? Yes. Was that your first comedy? Wait, and it was. No, I never talked about it. During what standard. was the title of the piece? What happens to shit when p- it goes down the toilet? I don't the know toilet. what the, piece, <laughs> the title was, but I know that I remember. That was your. That was the subject. I was writing about. The, um, what was the assignment? Like the sewer system or something? It was a, just a general English uh Oh, my God. Like, what the fuck would make you think <laughs> what happens to shit? That's like something like a third grader would be like, yeah, I'm going to write a paper on how, what happens to shit. So was it like a whole, did you name a, the shit? Like Sammy shit? Was, Sammy shit came out of so-and-so's ass and then went down a tube. What, so, it yeah. was a whole descriptive uh, paper about... Uh, you one know, particular duty or just duties? I think it's one big, large, double piece of shit. Piece of shit right. Know? And how it comes out and swirls around. and Yeah, it was pretty gross. It was pretty gross. And it went down the... Did you go through the sewage system? No. No, I just left it in the... Okay, in, in the, the potting. Was it too big to go down? No. I've had that issue. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> All right, so I feel like I'm at home with my two boys. Yeah. <laughs> so you write, and she says that's that you're talented. And she had a, a student teacher who tried to get me to go to L.A. to do stand up, and I'm like, get in a van with this guy across country? No, thank you. But had you done stand up before? No. Have I, you thought of it? But so it was a funny piece about the duty. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I thought it was like you were okay. I All thought right. It was like comedic no, it was a com- comedic piece oh. about it. A piece of shit that's in the t- <laughs> Robert and how Frost, it disintegrates. The road not taken. <laughs> <laughs> but I was okay. afraid. I was afraid. I had done, um, you know, uh, what do you call those things where you stand on stage? Stage fright. No, you stand on stage and you read a play. Uh, a reading. A play reading. There's some. I can't think of the name of it, but we called it that. Right. And I love doing those. And you I loved being and on stage. Yeah, I loved being on. I was in the play. My first play, I was a escapee from a rest home. Uh huh. I remember that. <laughs> the second one was uh, Pearly. Wait, so you were playing an older person in that play, escapee from a rest I home? I had. I remember my. <laughs> <laughs> was Mrs. Mead directing yeah. that? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, Mrs. I had Mead a, sounds uh, hilarious. My costume was just an old white, uh, just white, just old white. Big, baggy bathrobe, like a Weinstein yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And then you did Pearly. I love Pearly. I was so mad that I didn't get the lead. I got I love. I, I got love. I yeah. I played the uh, the old captain who was right. white, and I made up some lyrics. Right. It was hilarious. I don't remember doing it, but I was so mad that I didn't get it. I didn't study. But right. I was just, you know, I would come late to rehearsals. Right. I was. <laughs> a big dick right in high school but that um uh i remember being in that play matter of fact the girl who played uh, my uh love interest is coming to the party no way yes what's her name her name is juanita moore what's she doing juanita moore She's in Detroit being a grandmother, posting pictures Can of Can you believe her that we're old enough to be... I I'm, I'm not. You are. But wait, so, were you and Juanita a thing? Ever? No, 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 no. Okay. We, all we right. were never a thing. So, all right. So you do this, and mm-hmm. then first stand-up gig, or first stand-up time. That was... Uh, in, it was in D.C., right? It was in D.C. Wait, I, but you had a girlfriend who was telling you to do this, yes, right? Who was that? Her name was Brenda. Brenda, Brenda. Lipkowitz. No way. A yes. Jew? Yes. Do the thing. Oh, my God. Brenda. <laughs> Thank She's you, Karen. She's black, though. She married a Jew. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to take that. Take that back. <laughs> Wait. Wait. I have a question for you. Yeah. Can we just go back a yeah, little bit? Yeah, we can do whatever okay. we want. Mm. What were you doing as a job when, before, while you were, like, doing this? Oh, um, I did everything. I was My first job was uh, at a car wash. Then I went to... Walking uh, at the car wash, yeah! Okay. <laughs> the 
This Sorry. is a musical podcast. Yeah. And then I went to, uh, what did I do? I worked at Sears in the, in the cash office. Oh, my office. God. How could you department. go back to fucking Sears after I started at Sears in the cash office. I was right. cashing folks' checks. And they stuff. probably um, felt bad. They were yeah. like, we got to give him a job. His father <laughs> dropped dead in the bedding department. <laughs> Did they use any of the sheets there to bring him out? Oh, my God. All right, sorry. Judy. All right, whatever. Wait, and did you ever think, like, oh, my God, I want to be a stand-up? Or did the no. girlfriend plant that the seed? The girlfriend told me that I was funnier. Than Richard Pryor, wow. but I hated, I hated her sense of humor. I didn't think anything she said was funny. But she laughed at everything. Are you she listening, laughed at everything Brenda? that I said. Okay. I hope not. Um, and she would sit up with me, and prepare me for the first time that I did stand up. Okay, so you went to the DC Improv? Is that no? We went no. to Garvin's Laugh In. Where's that? Oh, DC at an open. Oh, Garvin's. I remember Garvin's. Okay, so you go, what year is this? 19- 1983. Oh, okay. And it was right around uh, Thanksgiving. Okay. The same time that Michael Jackson came out with Thriller. Oh, okay. And I didn't tell anybody in my family because I had been so many different jobs. Right, and they were probably like, okay, yes. well, yeah, yeah we that's believe fantastic. It. Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, I, remember, I remember like it was yesterday. She's sitting there, first night, open mic, I was number 13. I had a glass of uh, Hennessy. What time did you have to get up to get your number? Like, people don't realize you have to get up, wait online to pick a number. I don't, I don't think it was All like right. that. It was that the same was, night. Okay, go ahead. And um, I went up there. I had five minutes. The lighting was so incredibly bright. And right. I'm like, what the hell is... And I didn't get a laugh until the end, the last joke. What were your? Do you remember the first joke? No. no. What was the joke that got a laugh? The joke that got a laugh. Let's see, this is the only thing we remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it have to do with poop? No. Yeah, it has to do with this book. <laughs> you should have just read your fucking essay. Go ahead. Uh. <laughs> it, was, it was a joke about uh, Leon Spinks. Oh yeah. Who was very popular yeah. at the time? Right. Yeah. And I said that he came in wanting to buy an Aretha Franklin. Right album, and I said, "I'm sorry, we don't sell marijuana." <laughs> and they laughed, and I, when I heard that laugh, <laughs> I said, "I am coming Big back drug. to the next week." Right. And every Sunday since then, and then they started letting me do um, weeknight hosting. Right. And I did that, and then what's his name? Bill Chef. Yeah, this is a very yeah. Go ahead, Bill and Adrian. And Adrian. They were working the club. Right. And I was hosting. Bill Shaft is an old guest. Adrian, Bill and Adrian, go ahead. <laughs> they said, you you need to be in New York. We right. Can, we can help make that happen. And they, they got me a spot at Catch. Yeah. So That was my first spot. You know, I, I did discuss this on the Bill Shaft uh, podcast, but when I, I was a student at Rutgers and they had a talent show. I had done stand-up as a dare in my dorm. And then they had some sort of talent show. And um, he and Adrian and Larry Amros were, do, you know, d- were hosting the final whatever uh, show. It was 1982, something like that, 83. And I was on it. And Adrian was like, you're funny, kid. You need to come to Cat. And it's exactly what happened. And I went to New York City and I drive from Rutgers to New York City. Okay, anyway, um, I love how these stories just end. So <laughs> do you end up going to, so you end up going to catch? Yeah, my, but my, my, I wait, I remember when I went, I was like, oh, I'm gonna get on stage. And I was like, waited all fucking night and never got on stage. I waited, I waited so long, and I had my cousin, she had a table of seven people that she no brought. No way. And I told her the show started at eight, they were all there at eight. Right. I went on at one, uh, one thirty. Right. There were three people, four people in the audience. Besides that table, or besides had they, the table, yeah. To the point where they didn't have any any money left. Right. And uh, my cousin, or somebody, had a, like a a penny. Right. And the waitress, and they gave her the penny. Right. And the waitress, like, come here, you can take that back. Right. <laughs> we don't really, really. <laughs> right. Believe. I'm like, wow, that was that was horrible. But um, yeah, that was the first spot. The second spot was uh, auditioning at the Improv. Right for silver. For silver. Yeah. Oh my God. Silver Friedman. Took, yeah. It took several, 
several because um, I was doing the the game show by then. So yeah, so you had so this. So you want to be black? Yeah. So you had this game show. So you want to be black? Tell us how that went. Well, um, that's what that came from the uh, when I went to college, junior college, right. and the teacher was like, "The reason that white people have always oppressed people of color because they are mad. Right. They wanted to be black. Right. Well, my my thing was okay. So you want to be black? And okay. then I came up with some really stupid. <laughs> Ridiculous questions, and the the winner would get a new car, which would be a um, like a Hot Wheels thing. No, or no? a um, a coat hanger. Right. That they could just go ahead and steal. Oh, that's, oh, that's funny. funny! I love that. You should bring that back. That know, is a fuck it, William. Can I be on it? All right. I so think what you should bring that back. That is so <laughs> funny. Wait, what were the questions? Oh man, the questions were like um, just horrible wrong incorrect just all right just james come brown, on james brown uh oh um here's a line from james brown all right uh white people smell funny when their hair gets wet <laughs> it had nothing to do with james brown. i just wanted to put that out there right so anything that i wanted to put out there that was totally wrong but would you say like true or false or were you just say, say i would give them um Multiple choice. They had three. They could choose uh, from among three different answers. Oh, okay. And that was one of them. I remember. I've forgotten all the rest of it. That's great. So um, (laughs) I'm just putting it out there that I think you should bring this back. I know. That would be. I know. It's way funnier than anything else. I know. I I did it on Comedy Tonight twice. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that show. I don't remember you doing that. Okay, so. The first time I did it, I did it I kill. Had, no, well, it was fine, right? But I had uh, my outfit was horrible. I bought eight dollar shoes from this right. place on Eighth Avenue, the kind that looks like you need the, uh, some sort of, you know, the club foot right. people wear. Right. They're just horrible shoes. Right. The, the pants had to be stapled because <laughs> they didn't. I couldn't, you know, I didn't have any money. Right. But I had to get something new. Right. Uh, for the show. And uh, it was, what's his name? Um, it was on a million times. Eventually did a sitcom for ABC. Uh, I can't think of his name. That's great. What's his name? <laughs> Give you know, us a hint. He did a, Bill Cosby? No, no, <laughs> ABC, the white dude. That's NBC. Oh. The white well, dude. He had a. And the show with the little kids, two two oh, young. Oh, Drummond? Tim Allen. No, keep going. Was Full that house? white? White people. Tim Allen. No. I said Tim Allen. Uh, Allen Thick. No. Oh Rob. man. Oh, J- Ray Romano. No. 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 Oh, ABC, okay. not CBS. ABC. ABC. In uh, the seven, in the in, late seventies, early eighties. He had a show with kids, and the two kids were two girls. Oh, Bob Saget. Bam. <laughs> And he's Jewish too, so he gets a Bob double belt. Bob was on there yeah. every night, seemed like. Where at? He was on uh, Comedy Tonight. Right, right, right. Okay, so you are you you moved to New York. I came to New York, yes, you in eighty four. And where were you living? Oh, nowhere. You you be you became homeless, but how did that happen? I was homeless when I got here. Wait, right. what happened with Brenda? I still know her. I we occasionally. I last I emailed her. Uh, she sent me something. You know, right. it's very but very. But you broke rare. up after you started yeah. to become yeah. successful. Well, Just after like, I knew that I was going to spend time doing it, I knew right. that I couldn't spend time being with her. Her boyfriend. Her, yeah. Was that a full time like job? Her fault. Huh? Like, yeah. can you think about it? Like, she's like, "Oh my God, I created this." Right. I I it. told you to do stand up, and now you're going to go to New York and dump me. It's okay, like that's star great. Is born. So, <laughs> all right. So you go to New York, and where you get here, do you drive? Um, I took the bus. Mm. Okay. Just like they did on that Stevie Wonder song. Right. Uh, New York, just like a picture, the skyscrapers and everything. Right. And um, I had a couple of weeks weekend worth of work. Through um, Rick Messina. Oh yes, yes. Rainy Night House. Um, there's another club in Jersey. Right. 
So I had like three three weekends worth of work, and I thought that that was going to sustain me. And, and then, did you have housing for those gigs? No. I spent the night with Rick. Uh-huh. I spent the night with John Maroney. Right. I spent the night with my cousins. Right. And then I said, look, either I go back to New York and live with my mother on her couch, or I just stay here. Wait, your mother was in New York? She was in D.C. Oh, in D.C., right, right, right. Okay. Oh, right, right. You go back to D.C. to live with your mother, or you stay in New York and continue doing this. I figure I had no kids. I was 28, 27. Right. What the hell? This would be a, a, an adventure. An adventure, yeah. Yeah. So I stayed on the train. I stayed on the bottom floor of the Port Authority, and I stayed in uh, Central Park. And Wait, you slept? Park? That's like where you slept? I slept mostly at the bottom of of um, the Port Authority. Oh, my God. Um, so law and order. Did you have bedding from Sears, or did you... <laughs> Did you get cinnamon? Yeah, where did you, how did you fucking, like... <laughs> shower. Wait, you know, yeah. How shower, did you... shower, that was very interesting. We call it um, a bird shower. You take it in the, in the, in the, in the Port Authority. Right. Uh, Penn Station. Yeah. The bathroom had a big uh, sink. Right. And you stick your stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> you would wash it off. I call that a whore's bath. <laughs> oh my god, that is this is horrible. This story is fucking I love horrible. Because he's so fabulous. Wait, about so, it. I know. So wait, I'm thinking so, about poor Brenda. Okay. I know Brenda Lefkowitz or whatever the fuck her name is. Lip, Lipkowitz. Lipkowitz. Okay, wait. So, y- all right, I just need to clear some things up. You're here. <laughs> you're doing spots with Rick Messina. So for three weeks, you're okay. Then you're like, I'm not going back home to my mother. I'm going to stay here. Do you call your mother and say, listen, I'm not coming back. I'll be living in the Port Authority. Because if that was a Jewish mother, fucking forget it. No. Uh, what are you talking about? All right, go ahead. My girlfriend at the time was Robin Montague. No. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. She's from D.C., and that's where right. I met her. Uh, through Greg Poole. I love Robin. Yeah. And uh, she was like, well, where are you going to sleep? I said, don't worry about it. You got a place to sleep. Right. I'm going to be all right. And, you know. So, all right. So you're I slept in, on the train a lot. You slept which train? B, A, B? A train from, yeah. from the beginning to the end. By Were the way. You like, uh, did you like do the thing where you took over the whole car and nobody no, would get in with you? No, could, you could only sit, sleep in your seat. You couldn't lean over either way. Why? Because the police would uh, uh, have to Yeah, yeah. So I would sleep like, I would go to bed. It'd be all kind of room. i wake up. Everybody's going to work. Everybody's smelling all good. I wake up. I got drool all over oh, my face. Oh God! Were you with like a grocery cart? Where was your stuff? I had a lock. Somebody told me how to to take a locker. This is unbelievable. I know. For fifty cents. It was used to be fifty cents every time you used it, but they showed me how to uh, rig it where I could just put fifty cent in and keep it forever. Right. So I had a locker, but. <clears throat> Like Penn Station, like back before terror. And Port Authority before they yeah. uh, they ripped them all out. Uh, there was a whole bank of, of, of lockers. And I slept in, um, what's that park down the street? In front of the library. The, uh, Brian, Brian park. park. Brian Park. I slept there a lot. Before they cleaned it up. <laughs> Fucking Giuliani. Uh, Wait, and then also you're going to the improv. I mean, I remember in the '80s walking to the improv, and it was not. It, it was 44th between 9th and 10th, and, the and it was. Oh night. my god, it was just like syringes and prostitutes, and I slept in the back of that room many yeah. times. Did too. you ever get attacked while you were living like this? Yes, not attacked, but I woke up and this dude standing right in front of me, <laughs> <laughs> just like this close. To me. Like what you doing? I'm just checking you out, man. I'm just checking you out. Uh, but I did get robbed. Um, they took a, um, I guess, what do you call it? A, a razor blade. Yeah. And slit the bottom of my pants. Right. Where they could take stuff out. Right. And I and I not wake up. Right. So I woke up one morning. I didn't have a key to my locker. I ran back to the locker, and it was half open. Oh. Uh, there fuck. was a sheet of a notebook hanging right. out. Oh, it was horrible. It was that was. That's pretty, like a like a in the movie of your life. That's devastating. That I wrote envision. about that. I wrote about it's still in the book that I'm still working on that and locked in my computer that uh. doesn't uh, 
has a battery. But oh, that's good. You need a new battery for your computer? Yeah, but it's old. Right. I don't know if, I don't know if anybody has an old battery. But Why I'm can't you just get a new computer? Yeah, I'm going to get a new computer. All right. But I still have to find Make sure you the save battery. it. Uh, save it and email it to yourself. Right. Right. Okay. Right. We, we're not going to. All right. So how long. I'm trying to help you. I want to know like what it was like to be homeless in the like. Right. Did you make friends? Did you when you you're homeless, but then you're going to the clubs at night. Right. It's like a weird homeless. The home. The, uh, the friend that I made was also. Well, uh, what's his name? He did warm up for a TV show. Oh, God. With the memory loss. <sighs> Give us a hint. Tall, Michael. He's got a pock face. Uh, Mike Sweeney? No. Yes, he was a lawyer before. Yeah, he, Mike Sweeney went to Rutgers Law School. He, yeah. He would come out and sit in the back of my audience when I did shows in front of the library. Sweeney? Yes. At, while he was a lawyer. While before he became a comedian. Right. Yes. I was a comedian. I was working the uh, the lunchtime crowd. What, what would you do? You would just do comedy on the street? I did the game show. Right. Um, I did another game show. Uh, so you weren't working in the clubs at this time? Not much. And was it like people, you had like a hat or something and people would put money? Yeah. Did you was, make any money out of it? I made enough to live. Right, right but not but to not get an apartment. No, no, no. no. That, like what would you eat, for example? Oh, man. Uh, like there just was something a, gross? <laughs> <laughs> like, how often did you bathe? I mean, I know I haven't bathed today or yesterday, right. but, like, how often? Not every day. And not, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I did, some nights I would have enough money that I'd get a hotel right. for the weekend or whatever. And then you would t use oh, the man. shower and sleep. That was like, yeah. Living it up. Yeah. <laughs> for the most part, it was uh, just enough to get me through uh, whatever night. Uh, that I was going through. Um, and we didn't have, like, people don't realize there were no cell phones. Right. No. So, like, you were isolated. You know, you, I mean, so, uh, I just. I had a, I had a, I had a, um, a cassette recorder. Right. Like a Walkman. had all my jams on it. Yes. Right. And I would listen to it at night, and then I woke up one night, and all I had was the headphones. And nothing, and they no. Took oh. the, they took the thing from me. But you learn, you know, right. you learn. Uh, so how long, how many months were you homeless? Or I was homeless from uh, February to October. Fe oh, February? That's... That 84. Wow. Like in the cold. Well, uh, after 10 o'clock in the morning, the sun would be high enough to uh, warm up the, the grass in Bryant Park. I, I found an old, uh, what do you call it? Long. Oh my God! This refrigerator, is the... refrigerator boxes. Oh yeah, yeah. That was a that was a bed. Right, right. Oh my God! You slept in a box. On a box, yeah. Yeah. And are you calling your mother and saying, "Hey, everything's great. Right. I'm in show business." Well, like, right. or I your sister? I live in Midtown. <laughs> yeah, I'm living in Midtown. <laughs> I'm doing sets. I perform every day. Uh, no, I don't think I was in touch with. You should go skating. And were Brian you Park ever? Shitty. Did you, you ever like, think of here. like getting a job, like in a? I like, did. I got a job as at. Uh, <laughs> uh, I delivered flowers. Right. For a minute, that was horrible. Right. Um, but no, I came here to be a comedian, and I was very stubborn, which right. I still am, and I decided that uh, that was going to be it. Okay, so uh, how do you end your homelessness? The Jane West Hotel, um, you could buy a room for 80 bucks a week. Wow. And it was a very tiny, less than half this size. Right. But down the hall was a bathroom, you right. had a bed. right. And uh, Charlie Barnett. Oh yeah, Charlie Barnett. I let him stay on my floor. Right at the Jane nights, at Jane, the Jane West Hotel. Right, so like a like a hostel kind of thing. What's right. his name? Um, Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman. Wow. Used to do uh, shows at the Jane West before. Um, like, did they have a room at the Jane West Hotel? No, I think they were just performing there. No, I mean they had a comedy room or a. No, a, no, no, no. They had there was a performing room. Right, that's what I meant. Okay. Yeah. 
don't forget to tune in next week to Just Kill Me Now. Um, or, it's Just Kill Me. Oh. Don't forget to turn uh, for part two on Just Kill Me. No, it's not. It's <laughs> just, just Kill Me. Now. No, no, Judy no. Gold's Just it's Kill Me. Just Kill Me Now. Just, just Kill Me Now. <laughs> Uh, everything was wonderful. I'll see you soon. Thank you for the visit. So long.